Hello guys and welcome to my review of the Bowers & Wilkins PX wireless noise cancelling headphones. This is the newest addition to Bowers & Wilkins mobile headphone lineup and also a new feature in terms of implementation being the active noise cancelling. Um, currently I have the navy blue and soft gold finish. There's also a space gray matte black finish. Both finishes are absolutely beautiful. Uh, the box is pretty elegant, very clean. Uh, the front shows the headphones from a side view as if you were wearing them. Uh, this is the actual side of the headphone on the side of the box and on the back it shows you uh, the main features here so let's dive into that now top left shows you that the PX responds to you now what the desk basically means is that the PX has these proximity sensors in each ear cup and basically when you pull the ear cup off of your uh, head if the sensor no longer detects your uh, an obstruction or your head is no longer there it'll basically pause the music and if you take the actual headphone off completely, like you put it on your neck or you put it on the table and uh, you go somewhere, it'll put the headphone into a standby mode, saving battery life. And when you take the headphones and put them back on your head, it'll literally turn the headphones back on, uh, reconnect back to your last paired Bluetooth source and continue playing the music, which is very seamless and very intuitive. Bottom left basically says wireless adaptive noise cancelling, which basically means that with the application that you can download on the Google Play Store or on the App Store for iOS, you can control the intensity of the active noise cancelling for the headphones and also dictate how much sound you want to let in. Also a pretty standardized feature nowadays with uh, headphones. Top right, you have the smart power. Basically this is just giving you a rundown of the battery life. Uh, it's 22 hours when you have active noise cancelling and Bluetooth on. It's about 29 hours if you just have Bluetooth but no active noise cancelling activated. And it's up to 50 hours if you just have active noise cancelling but you have a wired connection to your source, be it the 3.5 millimeter cable or I believe you can also use the USB-C cable for direct digital streams. Alright, let's open up the box and let's see what's inside. Okay, now inside you have the uh, PXs, it's very gorgeous, just can't get over how beautiful these are. They're just laid uh, nice and elegantly, just waiting to be seen. Let's take these out. Okay, now the bottom of that, you have the carrying pouch, which pretty much resembles the same pouch that you could find with the uh, P5s. These do not fold up like the P7s or the P7 wireless did. So they do have a bigger footprint, which I don't like, but at least they still give you a case. The case is pretty nice, very suave looking. Uh, inside the case, you have your typical booklet, warranty information, quick start guide and stuff like that. Put that off to the side. And then you also get two cables, I believe here. Okay, so cable number one is your USB-C connection cable, which provides you with the ability to charge the headphones and to plug it into your computer and use the headphones as an external digital to analog converter. You can also probably plug this into your Android phone and your Android phone would stream the uh, digital audio over this cable into the headphones so that the internal digital to analog converter in the headphones receives the audio, which will provide you with the best possible sound. Uh, you also have a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter connection. This will provide you with audio playback in the event that the uh, headphones uh, battery dies or you just want to connect this directly to a uh, better uh, source, like a better digital analog converter or a nice amplifier of some sort. Inside the case, you do have like a little uh, pouch here that you can store something else in. And that's about it for the case. Let's move that to the side and let's get to the headphone. Okay. All right, now the headphones themselves. So the PXs share a lot of the uh, design language from the P7s. It has that nice uh, kind of like very elegant swoop in arms which then connects to the back ear capsule here and the uh, these etched 
logo of Bowles and Wilkins. It's a very elegant and sophisticated looking design. However, as opposed to it being like a full leather, as with the uh, previous iteration, it has this kind of like ballistic nylon material where the blue is. This should be very durable, actually, in terms of longevity over leather. So this is probably even better built than the previous iteration. And the air cups themselves, which are still, thankfully, magnetically movable, are real leather, not synthetic, that you can find on Bose or Sony's. This is real leather. And um, they magnetically attach, like I said before. And on the bottom of the headband here, it's also a real leather, while the top is the uh, ballistic nylon. So, a new feature with the PXs that has not been in the mobile lineup but has been in the p9 series is the addition of an angled speaker if you can see the speaker has essentially a uh, pivot it's not completely aligned with the actual ear cup now what this does is it allows the speaker to be essentially parallel to your ears so the sound delivery is a lot more natural than traditional headphones so this gives you a much bigger sound stage and a much more natural overall sound so let's put these air cuffs back on and they just attach just like that. Very easy, very simple and very smooth. So in terms of comfort, I would rate these as a little bit above my Sony's, the WH-1000 XM2, but just not as good as the Bose QC35 twos that I have. Uh, the air patch here has a wide opening. Your ears can easily go inside of these, no problem. And due to the angle drivers, uh, your ear does not touch anything once they're inside so the comfort is pretty good But the reason why they're not as good as the Bose is because due to the hefty materials One this weighs more than the uh, the QC35s and also the Sony's and two, the ear pads here They're not as plush as the Bose so it kind of is a bit rigid on the outer part of your ears but eventually with heat these kind of do warm up and become softer but they're just they're just not as like invisibly so to speak soft as the uh, bows are uh, extension is done here very smooth adjustments as you can see so it's a very nicely built headphone very very nice on the right side you have your controls the top button will provide you with a volume up adjustment the middle button provides you with play pause. Uh, if you double press it, it will skip your music forward. If you triple press it, it will skip your music backwards. Uh, if you press and hold, it will activate your voice assistant. Very multi-featured button here, which is very typical for nowadays with the uh, three button setup. Uh, the bottom button adjusts your volume down. This button over here is to turn on and off your noise canceling. And this button down here, which is like a, a slider button as well, will turn the headphones on or put it into a pairing mode. Then you have this little dot here, which is like your LED notification for the status of your headphone. Uh, you have your 3.5 millimeter input here, and then you have your USB-C uh, input right here. All right, so with that being said, let's get over to the sound quality of this headphone. Overall, I would characterize the PX sound as mellow, natural, very coherent, and just pleasantly smooth to listen to. Now, starting off with the bass, the bass on these are excellent. It's a very tight, defined, and focused bass with a very modest uh, elevation above the mid-range. However, the focus on the accentuation is more on the sub-bass region as opposed to the mid-bass. So. This allows a very seamless integration with the mid-range as to not create this sense of veal or haze over the lower mid-range that sometimes did plague the P7 wireless and the original P7s. The PX is here, the bass has been toned down a bit which allows the other frequencies to breathe a bit more and also the actual quality of the bass has been improved so it's a tighter more visceral sound in bass that has a very nice sense of punctuation. It's very quick in terms of impact and I thoroughly enjoy that bass presentation that the PX has to offer. Um, moving over to the mid-range and we have basically a very very pleasant mid-range here. It's kind of nearly void of all harshness. It has like nearly no sibilance at all. However, it doesn't sound muffled which is a very common tendency 
to have with a mid-range that sounds so pleasant and warm. It's still clear, open, and distinct. Vocals, instruments sound very uh, nicely placed. It sounds like they are projecting their sounds towards you. And the overall, you know, like the, uh, the harmonics, the overlays, the subtle details and cues within these instruments, they, they come through very clearly and very naturally. Nothing sounds like it's forced. It's very effortless in this presentation. And these are one of my favorite sounding uh, headphones in terms of the uh, mid-range. It just sounds very lovely and easy to listen to. And it's just, it's very full of emotion. If I could just put it into that one uh, phrase there. Now, moving over to the treble. The treble here, if I would give a flaw towards the overall sound of the PX, it will line the treble. And it's basically just the overall presence of the treble. It just sounds like it's rolled off and a bit soft. And as a result, it doesn't sound like it's balanced with the overall rest of the frequency. Now, it doesn't really hurt the soundstage that much because of the angle drivers. The soundstage on these is really good. It sounds very open. It has a very nice um, venue space in terms of putting your music into a presentation. It sounds very convincing. It's just that the actual volume level of the treble could be a bit higher, but I can see where Bowles and Wilkins tuned this headphone to do that because this is essentially a headphone you're going to use outdoors, and the treble issue that I just explained really only comes into play when I'm in a quiet environment. So when I'm outside and I raise the volume to, say, moderate levels or a little bit higher than that, the fact that the treble is not that... You know, it's, I wouldn't even say it's not that present. The fact that the treble isn't overbearing leads to a very smooth, dynamic sound at all volumes. You can listen to this at nearly max volume or at max volume, and your ears won't feel fatigue because the treble is very soft and easy to listen to. And you can easily fix this issue if you want a more neutral treble, treble presentation by simply just opening up an equalizer and just applying the treble boost to that region. In terms of the quality of the treble, the treble is very clean, distinct, and defined. And it's, it extends pretty well. It's just not very present in terms of relation to the mid-range and the bass. So if I would give a flaw to this headphone, it'll be primarily the treble just doesn't have a balanced volume presentation. Uh, like I said before with the soundstage, the soundstage is excellent for a closed back headphone. The depth and the sense of uh, immersion and space within your music is very convincing, very natural, sounds absolutely amazing. And overall, I would rank this headphone as my top sounding wireless Bluetooth headphone over my previous uh, top ranking, which was the Bose QC35 twos. And also another favorite, which was my Sony 1000 XM2. These by far sound superior to both of those headphones in every frequency. The bass on these is tighter than the Sony's and the Bose. The mid-range sounds more convincing and natural than the Sony's or the Bose. The Bose has a very nice and clean mid-range as well. But it doesn't have that emotion that I missed when I switched over to the Sony, even the MDR-1000X or the 1000XM2, but the PX is here managed to incorporate that emotion from the Sony's and the more cleaner sound from the Bose and merge it with its own uh, flavor or sound. Uh, Treble-wise, because of the, the roll-off, um, I would probably take the the Bose QC35 2's treble over this in its natural state because both headphones are pretty clear sounding in terms of their treble. The Sony's had a bit of a grain and the treble didn't really extend that far like the Bose did in terms of the upper treble uh, presence and if anyone wants to debate me there's measurements everywhere that proves that the Sony's do not extend that well when in wireless uh, mode. It doesn't extend that well on the treble as compared to the Bose. Um, these extend like the Bose, but the volume and the volume presence is just not as well balanced as I would say the Bose has. But overall, these are my favorite sounding headphones. I would say this is the best sounding Bluetooth headphones that I've ever heard, period. 
and are now my most recommended if anyone wants a top of the line Bluetooth headphone with money being no question at all. And one thing I almost forgot, the noise canceling uh, effectiveness. No, this is not as good as the Bose or the Sony's. Those two headphones are significantly ahead of this headphone, but the level of effectiveness that the PX has is still adequate enough for my daily commute in New York City and just general. It blocks out enough noise, but I can still hear the sounds around me when the music is paused or if the music is on a really low volume. But it still doesn't really bother me, but I'm just used to what the Sonys and the Bose have to offer where it sounds like you're literally isolated off into a sealed sound chamber. I'm trying to think of anything else I could have probably left out. If there is, just let me know in the comments, guys. And once again, thanks so much for watching my review. And stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.